I got mad when I found out the Uncle Ben story. I'm like, Uncle Ben was a model. They paid him $50. And I don't think he even know uh, his relatives now that this guy was paid $50. And this is a multi-billion dollar business now. Even Aunt your mama, they was taking her around. She got paid $5 in 1889. And they relatives are not getting residuals uh, from this. And that's the thing that made me say, we have to educate our culture. We just want to get right right into it because there's so much to talk about. Um, but speaking of ownership, and that's something that you know you've preached your whole career and you've walked your whole career. Uh, you have the new line of of rice, Uncle P's rice, Uncle P's grits, Uncle P's oatmeal, pancake mix, syrup. At a time that uh, you know the country has come to terms with the racism within the food industry, whether it be you know Uncle Ben's or Aunt Jemima, uh, what inspired you to take this step into the food field? Well, you know, I've, I've been doing this and I've been recognized that and I'm just so happy that our culture is recognizing that we don't own none of those products and those brands. Uh, those brands are mockeries of us because our grandparents made us buy those products thinking that our culture, people that look like us, own those products. Uh, it's been about seven months ago that I have gotten all my product together and started shipping to the uh, smaller mom and pop stores and now on my way to the major chains. But what's happening, I mean, is only God because I was prepared and my grandmother always told me when you do the right thing, blessings will come. And so um, nobody knew the timing that this was gonna happen. And uh, man, it's almost like how I did the music. I put out records every other month and uh, the same thing with the packaged food goods, nobody looked like us uh, in those departments uh, on those shelves and actually own this. So people are taking those uh, products, the, the Uncle Ben's and Auntie Mama off the shelves and they're putting Uncle Pete, somebody that that's a real person. So people don't know, like I started the Uncle Pete thing from the whole it was a family movie that I created called Uncle Pete. And uh, I, I, I looked and said, when I did my research years ago, uh, I got mad when I found out the Uncle Ben story. I'm like, Uncle Ben was a model. They paid him $50. And I don't think he even know uh, his uh, relatives now that this guy was paid $50. And this is a multi-billion dollar business now. Even Aunt your mama, they was taking her around. She got paid $5 in 1889. And they relatives are not getting residuals uh, from this. And that's the thing that made me say, we have to educate our culture. Now, if we're gonna fight this injustice, uh, it start with economic empowerment because if we don't own anything, and I'm telling my people, stop burning the blocks down and let's go buy the blocks back. So we have to be educated on financial literacy to do that. So, I mean, we are protesting, we together uh, in unity, blacks, whites, everybody's coming together, Latinos, Asians. I mean, when you look out there and see these protests, it's not just all black people anymore. So, I mean, Martin Luther King them paved the way. Uh, this, this generation is really going hard and we're committed. I'm committed to, uh, the whole economic empowering of our people and our culture. I think that's important. If, if we're gonna make some real change, we have to have a plan of action. We have to be committed to it. And we have to hold the ones that are in charge accountable. We also have to vote and put some African-American diversity, judges, uh, these, these corporations, these large corporations, we gotta have some diversity, African-American, Latino people in there, so we are able to put our product in there because it's none. When you look at all the CEOs of the Fortune 500 companies, it's only three African Americans, and that's a, a half of one percent. So think about it. Like we have to change that. I like how you said educate. Yes. You know, how do we go about that? You know, the other day I wrote an article. You know, just really posing the question: Why don't we boycott Chick Fil A if they're so problematic? 
you know, um, a lot of reactions were just scoffing. You know, the chicken nuggets are too good. You know, I can't I can't part with that lemonade. Um, how do we educate the people? Well, the thing that the way we can educate people now, everything is on social media. Whatever you want to know, you could hit a button and say, "Teach me about this." Like back in the days, we had to go to encyclopedias. We had to go to the library. Now it's at your fingertip. That's why this uh, this thing exploded with the Aunt your Mama and the Uncle Ben because when our people start researching, they start saying, wow, we never owned this. They've been doing this to us for 130 years. We, we got to stand up, it's time to do something about it. But imagine if we didn't have that. So even uh, the internet and social media, it's giving us information faster. We don't wanna read books. We don't wanna do stuff to take the time. So now the education part going to log on, Google what you want, and it, it'll pop up. So if you could do that with negative stuff, do that with positive things, I mean, it will open up so many doors for you to know where you come from, where we are, who owns stuff, who don't. Uh, it's public information. I do have to salute uh, Mars for standing up to, to uh, saying that they are repackaging those products that for those CEOs of that company in in uh, Quaker Oaks to actually stand up both of those CEOs that's big that's showing that they're recognized recognizing that this is racial uh, product in the way the way it's been going for so long so I mean for them to lose money to start over that shows you that we're coming a long way but it also is opening up opportunity for African Americans uh latinos to get an opportunity to get in sh shelving space because that's where it's from like we can't get the shelving space in walmart's targets kroger's the major chains 7-elevens like now we're going to get that shelving space because it's all about diversity now at least giving us an opportunity if our product is is good and people are checking for the product so we have to start buying our product so we can put money back into our communities so if we brought those products, how come we can't buy them from us? If we brought it from them, not knowing who owned it, where it came from, and we turned those companies into multi-billion dollar business. So I think it's time now if we educate ourselves, we could do the same thing. We can make a lot of more African-American billionaires. It don't have to be where you can just count on your hand to uh, Bob Johnson, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Oprah Winfrey, you know, like that list could get way bigger than that if we realize that product outweighs talent. So if you look at Michael Jordan's career, Michael Jordan's career, even though he's a billionaire now, but he had a million dollar deal to which I'm thinking, what if he got a percentage of Nike back in those days? Because he built that company, turned it into an empire. We was wearing Converse back in the days, you know, uh, we wasn't wearing Nike. We was wearing Converse and Adidas. And if you look at it, uh, Michael Jordan, he trademarked his name. That turned him into a multi-billionaire. But imagine if he had shares in that company. Imagine if he had stock in that company. Uh, imagine if they gave him a percentage for what, he, what he's done. The guy, uh, Spencer Haywood, was offered $100,000, a 10% of Nike. Before Jordan, he took the $100,000. He would have made $8.6 billion today. So that's why I say education is so important in, in us educating ourselves, but learning from those stories, learning from the mistakes we made and saying, let's give this to this generation. That's the only way we're going to build a generational wealth. That's, gonna, that's the only way we're going to get real equality. And that's the only way we're going to get economic empowerment is educating ourselves. Because in Bible, you know, you don't ask for money, you ask for wisdom when you pray. When I go to bed at night, I, I, I pray for wisdom. I don't pray for money. If you have wisdom, everything else will come. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. And, 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 and you talked about all of these decisions that, you know, that could have changed everything if you just, you know, ask for stock or know your worth or invest in yourself with some of these companies. In, in your career, you've done so much um, investing in others and, and knowing kind of when the right time to do that is. Uh, you've done so many things. Is there one... Uh, decision you made financially that you think people could learn from that you you think is maybe your best investment of your career? Best investment in my career was uh, 